Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double, double what they forfeited. And everlasting joy shall be theirs. Double for your trouble. Why? Verse 8, for I, the Lord, love justice. That's just the bottom line. God loves justice. Now, let me tell you something. I know that a lot of you have been through a lot of rough things. But you can let it make you bitter or you can let it make you better. And actually, the things that I went through, I had to make a choice at one point, but they've actually made me strong. I mean, I am strong. Strong inside. I don't quit. I don't give up. If I got a goal, I'm going to go after it. I'm strong physically. I'm strong. And you can be strong. But sometimes you got to go through some stuff, and in the middle of that going through, you've got to make a decision. I'm not going to park here at the point of my pain and give up on life. I am going to go through with God, and I believe this is going to work out good. Amen? All right. Point number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First point to the healing of your soul. You must receive God's unconditional perfect love for you. You receive it as a gift. You can't deserve it. You can't earn it. And I don't care what you do, you cannot keep God from loving you. Because love is not something he does, turns on and off. It is who he is. Who he is. But if you have a revelation, not a teaching. Come on, we don't need another teaching. We need a revelation in our life. And the only way that a teaching that I'm doing becomes revelation to you is if you go home, you take it, you get out your Bible, you look at it, you write things down. you got to put some effort into it. You, you can't just sit there and want somebody else to download a victory into your life. I mean, we love free downloads. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is not a free download tonight. What I have to say here tonight cost me an unbelievable amount of pain. And I'm very happy to share it with you, but I am not offering you a free download. What I'm showing you is that you can have the same thing that God has given so many people if you're willing to do the same things that they did. Come on, get up, make up your bed. It's time to have a life. How many people here tonight need to make a decision about going home and beginning to just be a little more tenacious about not letting the devil walk all over you? Come on. Man, I just might get excited if I stay up here long enough tonight. You are accepted. Close your eyes and swallow this. God loves you unconditionally. He is not going to love you anymore when you behave better. <laughs> God, God will never love you any more than he does at this moment right now because he already loves you with a perfect love. God loves you. Even though my mother and my father have forsaken me, the Lord will take me up and adopt me as his own child. Nobody in here is an orphan. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I think sometimes it's how we see ourselves. If you see yourself as broken, if you see yourself as an orphan, then you're always going to be that. And I want to tell you something, if you're still in the pit, I know exactly how you feel, but I'm telling you, this is your night to come out. When Jesus walked up to the tomb of Lazarus, he said, come out. When, king, when the king went and opened the door of the fiery furnace, 
And he saw not three men in there that went in, but he saw four because Jesus is always with you in your fiery furnace. He said, come out. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. And I'm telling you right now, it's time for you to come out. It's time for you to stop living like Jesus never died for you and start acting like the unbelievable, amazing human being that you are. Come on, give God a praise. If you want your soul to be healed, you have to receive God's forgiveness, and that means that you have to forgive yourself. Now, obviously, we can't forgive ourselves for our sins, but when we receive God's forgiveness, receiving it means that you take it and you let it go, and in essence, you forgive yourself. Don't go, the Bible says when he forgives us, he forgets our sins and he removes them as far as the east is from the west. You don't need to sit around and think about all the things that you did that were wrong. One of the things that came up several times today was how do I get rid of this regret? How do I get rid of this regret? And you know, I talk a lot about regret because my father... Bless his heart. I mean, he's gone home, and I'm happy to say with the Lord now. But he was 83 before he gave his life to Christ. And he was mean and hateful and abusive. And, you know, when he died, nobody really cared. Because he never really did anything for anybody. We took care of him because we felt like it was what God wanted us to do. And that ended up being a witness to him, and he did receive Christ, I think, as a result of seeing God's unconditional love. But all he died. All he had laying on his hospital bed was regret. Regret. That's one of the reasons why I just wrote that book, Seize the Day. I'll tell you what, when I get to the end of my life, I want something to be proud of. I don't want to look back and just have nothing but regrets. I want to say, man, Jesus, we had quite a journey, and I'm so grateful for everything that you did in my life. I'm begging you tonight, don't live with regret. Don't park at the point of your pain. Let it go. I don't care if you did it 50 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago or this morning or on your way to this conference. Ask God to forgive you and let it go. Receive his forgiveness and forgive yourself and let it go. Point number three. And boy, here's the one that seems to get so hard for everybody. Completely forgive all the people that have hurt you. We have got so many angry people in the church. So many people that are mad at somebody. If it's not somebody from a long time ago, you're mad at the preacher because he didn't shake your hand on Sunday, or you're mad at the choir director because you didn't get in the choir, or, you know, whatever. All it does is just slam the door on what God wants to do in your life. Why do you want to stay mad at somebody that's out having a good time and don't even care that you're upset? That doesn't even make any sense. All you're doing is hurting yourself when you stay angry. You're not hurting them. All those years I hated my father, that didn't change him. That didn't make him want to repent or change him. Forgive people. You say, I want to, but I just can't, I just can't. Years ago, I said to God, why is it I see sincere people come and ask me to pray for them that they'll be able to forgive? And then two weeks later, they're back again asking me to pray for the same thing. I know these are good people. I know they love you. Back then, I was doing like different meet, meet, weekly meetings around town. And so I, you know, I had a lot of the same people week after week. And they would come back, same thing, same thing, same thing same thing and I knew they were sincere and I didn't understand like God why if they want to forgive 
Why is it they don't seem to be able to? And this is exactly what the Lord spoke to me. He said, because they don't do what I tell them to. Now wait. What has God told us to do regarding forgiving our enemies? Pray for them? Come on, don't sit there and look so innocent. How many of you actually really sincerely pray for the people that have hurt you to be blessed? Yeah, well, we got a few holy hands up, but not very many, let me tell you. You know why? Because the truth is you don't want them to be blessed. The Bible says that you bless and do not curse them. To bless means to speak well of. To curse means to speak evil of. So that means you've got to stop retelling everybody what they did to you over and over and over and over and over and over. You've got to zip your lip, pray for God to bless them. It is very hard to keep hating somebody that you're praying for every day. The best thing that you can do when you've got an enemy is send them a present. Now that went over big. Okay, now, you don't have to feel like praying for somebody to be blessed to pray for them. You do it in obedience to God. You don't have to feel like blessing your enemies, but you can do it in obedience to God. And it's perfectly fine if you say, you know, God, I don't feel like doing this, but I love you so much that I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. Because I believe that your word works. And so I'm just going to tell you right now, you are going to be living in this stupid, ugly pit the rest of your life if you don't make a decision that you are not going to live angry and you are going to start getting so good at forgiveness that you are going to give the devil a breakdown. Number four, no more self-pity. You know, no matter how bad you think you've got it, there's somebody else in this room right now tonight that's got it worse than you do. Count your blessings, and I mean that. I've been doing something the last week or so, week and a half. I don't know how hard it'll get after I do it a while, probably harder, but I'm writing down 10 things every day that I'm thankful for in my journal, but I, I made a commitment that they had to be 10 different things every day. They can't be the same thing. Now, it's getting pretty interesting, but you'd be amazing. I mean, really just jaw-dropping amazed at all the things that we have to be thankful for if we would just actually stop for a minute and pay attention to them. It would so drive self-pity out of your life that it would have no way to even hope to get in. Number five. Woo, I love this. I wish I had an hour and a half. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Stop blaming everybody else for your problems. Own your own junk. <laughs> own it. I have a bad attitude. And my attitude belongs to me and Nobody can make me have one if I don't want to. Own it. Take responsibility for it. I'm having a lousy day. Well, I think it's your fault. Well, no, I can choose to have a good day if I want to. Nobody else can make you have a bad day if you really don't want to have a bad day. Here's the thing. What my dad did to me when I was a child in sexually abusing me was the reason why I had the problems I had. But I had to stop using that as an excuse to stay that way. Come on, hear me. That was the reason, but my, the reason now became an excuse to stay parked at the point of my pain. And so I had to stop blaming, start realizing that all painful, hurtful things come from the devil, he just finds somebody to work through, and I figured out how to get him back. And the way you get the devil back is by doing as much good as you can every day of your life to as many people as you can as long as you breathe. <laughs> Romans 12, 21, we overcome evil with good.
one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. That's why God says, bless your enemies. Pray for those who treat you cruelly. That's why it does no good to blame people who hurt you. The only reason why they hurt you is because somebody hurt them and they haven't had any healing in their life yet. Amen? Stay in the Word, 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 stay in the Word. Amen? You know, the Word, just like you might take an aspirin if you got a headache, there's something in the Word for everything that ails you. All you got to do is take it. You got a prescription that's got as many refills as you'll ever want. And you can't take too much. The Word of God is one thing you cannot overdose on. Be patient. Let the Holy Spirit lead. And help as many people as you can possibly help. <laughs>